Hey folks, welcome back to the cabin. I've got a few things that are a bit of a follow-up from our electrics video last week. What we realised is there were two or three really big points that we just simply forgot to talk about uh, and that's what we're going to do now. So follow me through and I'll show you a little bit more detail on how we've constructed or how we've wired this construction. So one thing was alarms, someone mentioned about where are we having alarms. So what we've decided on, uh, there's gonna be four alarms in the building, which is loads, hopefully. We've got a, a normal smoke alarm here, which is uh, linked up or interlinked with a heat alarm, which is just above the kitchen. And then down the far end where we will eventually have a log burner, we've got a carbon monoxide alarm. So between those three, they're all interlinked. And then of course, if we do decide on just a small electric, no, a small gas boiler, uh, which is just an LPG, just like a mini combi, but not doing heating, then we would have a carbon monoxide alarm in there as well. Let's go through through to the utility, which it's ignore the workshop. state. Yeah, it's kind of everything dumping around at the moment. The consumer unit is up here and everything's labeled up nice and neatly. So what we've done, you can see here, it's front lights, rear lights, front sockets, front uh, heaters, rear sockets. Everything is wired so it's split half and half. What that means is there is very little that supplies both halves on the same circuit. It's sockets this side and lighting this side, heaters this side because we've got electric radiators in the rooms. The only thing that has to span the two is out in the hallway. So when we come into the entrance kind of lobby, the switches here control the lights for the whole open plan. And of course, some of those lights are on that side. So this is one instance where the wiring crosses the halves. Um, everything else we tried to do in a way that is completely separate. The other important thing that James came up with right at the beginning was saying to us, when we were doing this in SketchUp about a year ago and planning it out, he said, if you can put all your big appliances electric shower, immersion, anything like that, all on the main side, which is where the consumer unit is. That means on any of the heavy duty cables or the thicker cables are gonna be on the same side. The only thing that comes across to here is sockets, heater and lighting. Uh, the outdoor lights are on the same, so that's fine. And then the, I'm guessing that the alarms are all on the lighting as well. I think that's the case. So let me show you now how these two halves are joined so that they can be unjoined when these two cabins are separated. And that's in this sort of unfinished access panel. This got a plasterboard uh, sheet to go up and then there'll be a kind of normal access panel cut into that. So in here you can see these connectors, they are called click flow. Um, and they're all labeled up. So you can see here front power. So we've called them front and back because if you call them north and south and then someone reorientates the cabin, <laughs> Uh, it won't match up. So front power, front power, lighting, permanent, lighting, permanent. I think that's where the two cross over. Those, like I was saying about those switches, front heat, front heat, etc., etc. Kitchen, 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 kitchen. What does SL times two mean? All of those will be neatly put in there. And what James is going to do, and also it's a few other bits I'm going to put on there is should someone else need to take these cabins apart in the future when it leaves the farm and I'm not there or I don't remember, on the inside of the access panel, I'm gonna put the instructions for where the bolts are joining it because in a couple of places, there will be bolts that are gonna be concealed on the cabin. Underneath the chassis, it's obviously just simple. You can see those uh, L brackets that have been welded on, bolted, and that's the sort of place that someone would think to check. Again, up on the glue lamp beams, we're gonna put a series of bolts up there and there'll be kind of a feature looking up at the beam and they would be fairly straightforward. But there's a couple of other places, one being here on this section, which is just a nice vertical hidden section. We're gonna put a couple of fixings through just to keep the mid part of the cabin together. Not in reality, it's going nowhere, 
but that'd be good one good place to put a couple of fixings and then i've got a sort of faux oak beam sort of capping that's going to sit a, a u-shape that which will sit over these to tidy it all up rather than boarding around it we thought we'll make a feature so that it kind of gives the appearance that the glue lamb beam is sat on a big post and that will slide over which means that when you come to take it apart well normally you won't be able to see the join when you come to take it apart you slide that off and then you'd have access so that is the sort of things i'm going to put on that little access panel a how to of how to take it apart finally to avoid joe getting wet filming from outside i'll just explain where the cable comes in which comes across from the distribution board in the other barn the cable comes in it comes into a box on the outside in that box i asked james and sean to install a meter Hopefully you saw that. So that's just where the connection point is and then the meter tails go into that. Everything is then sealed so we've got no kind of leaky hole there through to outside. But within that box we've got just a secondary meter. So that's not a meter that you would check for your bills. But what it means is because the farm is on, you know, is a business uh, commercial site at the moment. Uh, it means that when the cabin is here we can allocate and work out how many kilowatt hours the cabin's used and then sort it out afterwards. It's also just a good way of seeing what this cabin is using, independent from everything else that's going on on the farm with the freezers that are constantly going and the pressure washers and whatever else is out there. Here, we've got a considerable amount of electric heaters. Now, hopefully we'll be using the log burner a lot and the insulation amount, you know, we haven't got any heating in here today and, you know, it's pretty nippy outside. So hopefully we're not gonna be using crazy amounts of electric, but we can monitor it over time. Then finally over here in the gloomy stone barn where all of it starts, where the, but where the original supply comes in, this is where we've taken the three phase along around. It will then go through a trench out in the lower yard and then across to all the other buildings. So although it's a super old supply coming in, in time that bit will get changed out and we know that from here on everything is brand new. A lot of this side is redundant now. This is the new bit that was put in um, so this is all three phase that comes in and then goes out into our armored down around internally which is fine for now uh, and then it goes out and off this one is just taking a supply to the smaller buildings nearby which was done back in the spring so both of those are new everything else is old so bit by bit, little by little, we are getting somewhere now. It feels like we're on the home straight. Still lots to do though. Everything we're doing, it's a case of learn as we go, design as we go. Everything's pretty bespoke. Of course, buildings like this are rarely done on a private basis. Usually they're built by companies that specialize it. Often they're gonna be built in a warehouse, you know, miles away and then shipped to you. And they're not really built to this sort of residential approach. They're usually either very lightweight residential or built for holiday spec. So much lighter weight and perhaps a little bit inferior as far as the products. Anyway, I think we are slowly but surely uh, getting to the end finishing line. And a big thanks to James and Sean for helping us, especially with the electrics. We've made sure that everything is detachable like I was explaining also when we come to do plumbing next week um, everything is on one side there's a wet side and a dry side same with the drainage so I'm hoping that that has been a, a wise decision and that it just keeps things nice and simple there is still a whole load of things we haven't even got water across to it yet so I'm going to get that put in with the tractor soon and hopefully then we will be able to start focusing on the fun stuff. And fun for me is second fix. It's getting the joinery and the cabinets in and the bathroom fitted and all the sort of nice feels you get from doing that and uh, less of the donkey work. But anyway, this week we've been getting the ceilings, all the cladding, and it is beginning to look a little bit finished. So looking forward to sharing that with you. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.